Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com and these are the family trees that I've uploaded to GEDmatch using GEDcom files. But this is 2023 and they're a little bit old in particular this first one I uploaded and I think it's about time to put a more recent version of my family tree up here. I also would like to clean this up a little bit. I would like to delete this oldest entry. In order to delete a family tree on GEDmatch, you don't do anything up here. Don't go into the tree because you can't delete it from there. Click here to manage GEDcom resources and scroll down to the list of files that you've uploaded and you just click the big red X beside the particular file that you want to delete. I'm going to X this one and say yes. Go back to the GEDmatch homepage. Just one more note, I've seen a few questions online about how do you know your GEDcom number. I think what people are asking about is the number that GEDmatch assigns to your GEDcom file when you upload it. It is a unique number, it's this number here. So if somebody is asking you for what is your GEDcom number on GEDmatch, this is what they're referring to. So now I want to upload a GEDcom file. You might be looking around wondering where is the option to do that. Here's some details about family trees. Not here. You might think it's under manage GEDcom resources. No, nope, it ain't in there either. Scroll down a bit and get to the section on the right, family trees, also known as GEDcoms. And you have two options, upload GEDcom fast, upload GEDcom alternative. I've never found any difference between either in terms of speed. It may make a difference if you have a massive family tree. I'll just use upload GEDcom fast. I want to draw your attention now to something that I think should be a little clearer in the GEDcom instructions. It's this part here. All GEDmatch users can view any GEDcoms. And while some websites like Ancestry will not show the details of living individuals in a public family tree, GEDmatch does not have that kind of feature. The details of every individual is shown. That includes living individuals. So it's up to you to privatize individuals before you upload your GEDcom file. So if you've just downloaded your family tree from Ancestry or MyHeritage, you probably need to do a little bit of extra work in order to privatize living individuals, unless you don't put them in your tree in the first place. So how do you privatize living individuals in a GEDmatch file? I'm going to use some free software. If you've got a paid software like Family Tree Maker, there's a way to do it in there too. I'm going to use Roots Magic. Now the last time I did this, I used Roots Magic version seven. They have since upgraded to version eight. Let's give it a go. This is the Roots Magic website, rootsmagic.com. They have a paid and free version of the software. The free version is known as Essentials, Roots Magic Essentials, and you're not going to see any visible sign of it. Just go into Roots Magic 8, go into Try It Free. Now, Try It Free makes it seem like it's some kind of time limited version of the software that you have a whatever, a 30 day trial or what have you. Nope. This gives you access to a fully fledged piece of software called Roots Magic Essentials, which does a heck of a lot. You don't actually need to put in your details. This is just putting you on their email list. I'm just going to click the download button. I want the installer for Windows, and that's gone into my downloads folder. I'll just run it from here. I'm clicking on the XE. Read the license agreement. I accept. Next. 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 68 meg. I'm going to leave the place database out for now just to speed up this process and install. Leave it at launch and click finish. I am using the free version. It takes a little bit of time and here we go. So this is the new look Roots Magic. <laughs> yeah, it does look a little different. My next step is I'm going to import a file. In this section here, I am going to choose a GEDcom. Of course, you have to already have this GEDcom file on your local machine or on a drive. I'm assuming you've got one. I do. I've downloaded my tree from Ancestry.com and this is what I'm going to import into the Roots Magic software. Click on GEDcom. Okay, I didn't quite expect that. So it's actually searching my entire hard drive for files with the extension of .ged. Um, I was just going to 
browse for the file I wanted and well, it's right there. Interesting. If you had the file on an external hard drive or perhaps Google Drive or OneDrive, I think you can use the browse for file to go and find it. I was going to do this and get this file, but it's conveniently found it as the first file. So I will select that one, select the location of the new file. So what's going to happen is that when you import this JCOM file, Roots Magic Software is going to create a new Roots Magic database in its own proprietary format to display your tree and kind of do interesting things with it. It's asking you to set the location for the separate Roots Magic file. I'm going to browse for destination. I am going to create a new folder. I'll call it Roots Magic. And I'll save it here. I'll leave everything that's enabled by default here. Okay, so this is just informational details for yourself. It's like notes. Just click OK. As you can see, it's importing the people. So now that I've imported the tree into the software, I'm simply going to export it, but choosing the option to hide living people. So I'm going to go to File, Export Data, JetCom File, Select the location of the new file. It's asking you where to put it. Now, don't overwrite your the file that you imported. Just give it a different name. I am clicking Browse for Destination. So I will name this privatize.jet. And this is where you get the magic feature. Over here are the privacy options. And you can choose to privatize living people. Just tell it how to privatize them. By choosing living here, it replaces the name of the person with the word living. The tree entry is still in the JetCom file and the structure of the tree remains intact, but the details are obfuscated. In terms of facts, don't print facts. Take these out, strip brackets. Not quite sure what that entails. I'll take it out. If the end result looks odd when I import the tree into JetMatch, I'll come back here and redo it. Over here on the left, yeah, there's nothing there that I want to change. So I'll click OK. That just brings you back to the view of your tree within Roots Magic 8. I'm going to take a quick look at the JetCom file in its raw form. Here it is, privatize.jed. I'm going to take a quick look at it in Notepad. The home person in this tree is the living person. So I'm going to take a look at what it's done with that entry. It took a little time to open. I'll just pull it up here. This is Notepad. Here we go. So this is the home person. It is the first individual entry, the indie entry here. It's set the name to living. It's preserved the gender and it has not included the birth date or birthplace. And that is exactly what I want. So now when I go to import a JEDCOM into JEDMATCH, this is the file that I am going to choose. So after all that palaver, we are done with Roots Magic. I'm going to exit out of it. It's just asking me if I want to make a backup of the database, but I haven't made any changes to the actual tree details. So I'm going to skip the backup. Back to the JetCom upload page. Right, so scrolling down a little bit, the next step is to give it a name. I will call it Gamble Family Tree. If this is your tree and you have uploaded your DNA to JEDmatch, then it is very much worth linking your DNA kit to your entry in your tree. This one, I'm going to leave this blank because it's just not true. And now it's asking you about privacy. We have taken the steps of privatizing entries in the tree to mark them as living. So we can choose yes. That lets us continue. Now I'm going to go look for my file. It is this, make sure you prick the right one now, yeah? So it's privatized.jed and click upload. So it's giving you some processing logs here. Don't close this page now. It kind of needs the page to stay open for things to happen. It's not the most modern of software. And here we go. Here is where you're getting your JEDCOM number. 
this is a number it's saying write this number down well you don't really need to write it down it will be displayed on the home page this is what we want to see upload and processing has been completed now there's a part here that talks about something rather obscure called the initial point person and it's identified as this individual and you notice that this individual has the name of living now there could be multiple individuals in that tree if i have more than one person who is living in the tree there will be this may not be you the home person so you should go and take a look at it i just clicked on the link and it's going to bring me to that entry in the tree and this is not what i expected i think we're going to have to fix something up here this is not the home person so i'm going to click here to unlink it and it's just removed the link i'm going to click back and i need to find myself so i'm going to go to home i'm going to go and have a look at the tree oh what the heck so this is what it's done and that was not the name i gave that tree so this is margaret from the future at this point in the video i am confused and you may be too and i may not be explaining what's going on so what jedmatch has done is that it assigned as the home person to a completely random individual in the tree that's up several generations from myself it then named the tree as that person i need to change that so i want to find my entry but the problem is that my entry has been privatized so a name search isn't going to find me so instead i'm searching for the name of my mother and then i'll be able to find myself i'm going to open the tree by clicking on the number link and then i'm going to use the search function okay so i'm going to search for the mother of the home person there i found the person i'm looking for the mother of the of the home person i'm going to click on that individual who's individual number two and i want to find her uh, there we see children living so i'm going to click on living and this is the home person now we've got it now i am going to enter this person's jetmatch dna kit number now of course i don't have <laughs> these my own kit numbers written down i'm going to open up Jedmatch in a another browser tab. I'll just open up this one here. And this is the kit that I want to use. So I'll enter that and click here. And it's giving me a warning. Link is between two people with different names. Jetcom name is Living. The DNA kit name is Margaret O'Brien. Oh boy. So if you click the back button on your browser to return to the previous page. And now I want to set this living person to be the point person. Okay, that's done. And now I want to go to the home page and just have a look and see what all this looks like. So I'm going to home and let me see. So here's the tree <laughs> with the, the name of living, which is kind of stupid. So I am going to change that name. So I'm clicking here to manage Jetcom resources. You, you just click in here, you go into the tree. You can't change the name from there. Click here to manage Jetcom resources. Scroll down and there I see it as living and I am going to change this to gamble. Is there a save? Apparently not. I click here to go and take a look at the homepage again. I want to make sure that that change has, has taken as it were. And yeah, here we go. That's the tree. <laughs> That's the Jetcom number and just to take a quick look at it this is the home person this is the home person's mother who is deceased and the father is not deceased so is set to living and that's it that is uploading your tree to jedmatch with a jedcom file not as smooth as i i would have wanted but i think you've now seen how to fix up any issues this YouTube channel has a number of videos on Jedmatch features. Once you've got your Jedcom file uploaded is our video on the surname search tool. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. Also put links to some of our articles on our website dataminingdna.com or just go to dataminingdna.com and search for Jedmatch. Thanks for watching.
I'd appreciate a thumbs up if this was useful and please do subscribe. <laughs>